Good evening. This is Pastor Griffin, and to all of the Oliverians and to all of the saints out in Facebook land, we praise God for the opportunity to come to you once again by way of Facebook. Listen, this is the first Sunday, and again, we will be having communion this Sunday. But listen, I want you to know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. First, we are going to have Sister Pam Mannings is going to come to us with a portion of the Sunday School lesson from the children's perspective. Let's listen to her as we hear now our Sunday School lesson, which is the best school. Good morning, Grace Mahala, and good morning, family and friends. Today's lesson title is Jesus is a Righteous Branch. Jesus is a Righteous Branch. It's coming from Jeremiah 23, verses 1 through 8. And the golden text that I'm going to read says, I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Have you ever heard of a family tree? You have a family tree. Everybody has a family tree. When you were born into your mother's and your father's family, you became part of their family tree. Family trees really are not trees like you see outside, but they can have many, many branches. Family trees can have many branches, and those are people. And then the trees that you see outside have many branches, which are just extensions of each other, of the mothers and the fathers that are where they are born, how they are born. So they can be giant too. Many, many, many people can become branches in a family. The largest tree in the world is the giant sequoia, sequoia tree from California. It has many, many giant branches and a huge, huge trunk. Jesus has a family tree too, and his family tree is gigantic because it really started from the beginning of time with God, his father. And he sent him as a baby through um, the lineage or the family tree of David. You remember David, the shepherd that was taken by the sheep and the one that killed Goliath <laughs> with a rock, that giant with a rock. He was just a kid <laughs> and he killed a giant. And the one that became, David was the one that became the king of Israel. Yes, Jesus was part of David's family through his mother Mary and her father Eli. From the mother Mary and her father Eli. Now when Jesus was growing up, he was not just a branch like you and me. You know, we sort of mess up. You'll see what I mean in a minute. But he was growing up like a branch, just like you and me. But he was a righteous branch. Why did they put that name righteous in front of branch? He just wasn't any old branch. He was a righteous branch. He never did anything wrong, not even as a child. That's the reason why they could say he's righteous, because he always did the right thing. He always walked on the right path. He always did everything right. He made right decisions. He chose right friends. He did all of those things. He was the only person who was righteous all of his life and all of the time. So he was considered a righteous branch. You know that saying which you hear many people say, God is good all the time and all the time God is good. I think that's where they got there from. He was right. He was righteous all, right. all the time. He never failed in being good. Jesus became the king of the world, and he ruled with wisdom. He did, he did what was just and right throughout the land. He did not let death kill him, however. He rose again. He came back to life, and he showed himself to people to prove it. He promises us the same thing. He promises us everlasting life. 
do your best to do what's right all the time like Jesus. But if you do just so happen to do the wrong thing or something your mom your dad didn't tell you to do, even your adults, sometimes we do something we shouldn't do, it's called sin. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you what you need to do. Talk to Jesus and tell him that you're sorry first and that you will try your best. You're going to try your best to never do that again. Then God will forgive and forget your sins, place you on the right path, and walk alongside you so that you will not stumble and fall. I want you to remember that he is the righteous branch, fair and real. Believe in him and ask him for forgiveness for sin, and you too will be connected to Jesus' family tree. You will be a part of Jesus' family tree. And that's where you want to be. Keep learning about Jesus Christ and the Heavenly Father. And remember, Sunday school is truly the best school. All right. that he have allowed us to be the recipients of. God is a great God, and he's worthy to be praised. Listen, I know this pandemic has, corona pandemic has caused many of us to feel great anxieties. I know it has shut many of us down. But listen, God is still on the throne. And this is nothing but 
a problem that only God could handle. This is a problem that only God can handle. Today, I want to talk about three words, and those three words are the three attributes of God. Those attributes of God that enables us uh, to receive the benefit, the divine benefits of his grace. I want to talk about these, and a vivid description of those attributes is demonstrated in Psalms 139. Let me read it in your hearing. It says, and I will be reading from both the King James and the Living Bible. After I read the scripture, I'm going to ask Brother Chris uh, to give me a melody. Listen, Psalms 139, the first six verses says, David said, O Lord, thou hast searched me and know me. Thou knoweth my down sitting and my uprising. My, thou understandest my thoughts afar off. Thou compass my path and my lying down and my uh, are acquainted with all of my ways. Listen, let me read those verses from the Living Bible. It says, O Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. Yes, you, 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 you know when I sit down. You know when I stand. When Lord God. When a far away, you know my every thought. Lord, you chart my path ahead of me. And tell me where to stop and rest. Every moment you know where I am. King James says, verse 4, like this. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it all together. The Living Bible said it like this. You know what I am doing. You know where I'm going. You know what I'm saying. Because God is an all-wise God. I want to talk to you today from the omnipotence, the omnipresence, and the omniscient of God. The omnipotence, the omnipresence, and the omniscient of God. David in his life had many of challenges. Some of them were brought on by his own self. But David face the challenges. One thing about David is that whenever he messed up, he wasn't too proud to go to the Lord and say, Lord, have mercy upon me according to thy multitudes of thy tender mercy. Blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly and I shall be clean. But listen, David says, purge me with his and I shall be whiter than snow. But do you realize what hyssop really is? Hyssop is a bush with thorns on it, long thorns. And if anybody take a bath with steel wool, you're not going to be white as snow. You're going to be bloody. David recognized that he was, his sin was uh, very deep. And so he says, purge me with hyssop. David recognized that he needed the cleansing that only God could bring about. And so David stands before God and he looks at his self and he knows what he sees is not pleasing to himself. And so he says to the Lord, Lord, 
Thou hast searched me. Thou knoweth my heart. Thou knoweth everything about me. Thou understandest all of my ways. You have, you have scrutinized me. You looked at me in my mother's womb. You, you know who I am. You know all about me. So, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I want you to guide me. And this is what David is saying. Uh, he says, thou, thou compasses my way. Thou knoweth my sitting. Thou knoweth my uprising. Thou knoweth when I, when I'm, what I'm thinking before I think it. Afar off thou knoweth all of my ways. So, Lord, this is what I need you to do. Examine me and then find anything that it shouldn't be. I, I need you to guide me. I need you to put your hands upon me again. Listen, have you ever uh, felt like you just couldn't make it by yourself? Have you ever messed up and you knew you messed up and you didn't know what to do? All you have to do is go to God. He says, I'm faithful and just to forgive if you will only repent. He says, listen, he says, if I take the wings of the morning and fly to the uttermost parts of the earth, if I go to heaven, if I flew and flee to heaven, you are there. If I took the wings of the morning and went to the uttermost parts of the sea, you are there. If I went down to the dead where the dead lie, you are there. So even if I hid myself in the darkness of the night, night is just like day to you. Listen, there are two people you can never hide from. You can never lie to. That first person is you. And the second person is God. Well, God really is the first person. You can never lie to him. Because he knows our thoughts before all. Before we think them, he's aware of what we're thinking. Before we make a step, he knows where we're going to step. Before we make a speech, before we say a word, he knows what we're going to say. God is all-knowing. The omniscient of God enables him to know us. He knows us from our birth. Then he says, God is also omnipresent. Listen, it doesn't matter where you go. God is invisible. He has, uh, he's the only somebody that I know can put on light as he put on garments. He hides himself behind the light. And, and, and somebody said, well, well, how does he do that? Well, God said in Romans, he says, uh, the, if you want to see me, look at the things that I've already made. He says in Romans chapter 1, he says, he says I, 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 I fix the things. Now, nobody can see the wind, but you can see the effect thereof. And so if you want to see God, just look at the things that he made. It demonstrates who he is. You can't look at the wind, but you can see the leaves on the trees moving. You can see the, the damage, the power that the wind has when it moves in tornadoes. You can see, you, you can see the effect of it. Well, God is just like that. You can see his effect that he has on the universe. He makes the sun rise every morning. He guides the moon every night. He keeps the stars in their silvery socket. He, he, he keeps the water flowing like it should flow. Don't you see? God knows. And his presence is felt throughout the universe. There is nowhere his presence. Listen, if you go somewhere on this planet and there is no wind, there is no air, you better leave in a hurry. Because, listen, God is just like that. If you go anywhere in life and you don't have God, you better leave in a hurry. You better flee to God's presence 
And when, how do you flee to God's presence? God is everywhere. He's omnipresent. He, 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 the totality of God is in the tiniest rose bush. But yet it is, the earth is too small to hold his presence. God is everywhere. So I hear people praying, Lord, come on in the building. You don't have to pray and ask the Lord to come in the building. He's already here. You don't ask the Lord to go to the hospital. He's already there. All you got to do is just trust him and believe in him. He says, not only that, he says, not only am I everywhere, he's the only somebody I know that can bump into himself going to where he want to go because he's already there. You don't have to wait on him to get there. But then when he gets to where he is, when he gets ready to act where he is, when he gets ready to do his thing, his divine action, listen, he all he has to do is to look at his power, his omnipotence. He has the power he has the power to do anything. Listen, God is too wise to be caught unaware of anything. He, 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 he's, too, he's too omnipresent to be late getting anywhere. Not only that, but he's too powerful for anything to overpower him. Listen, he says, Roman, I'm sorry, uh, 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 Psalms Number 91 says, he has set his love upon him, and because he knew his name, he shall honor him. Not only that, but he gave his, him honor a long life. He gave him power to deal with any problems. Not only that, but listen, <coughs> when uh, you look at Jesus, he has the power to handle what you need. He had the power to go to the cross. He had the power to stay on the cross. He had the power to bleed and let water and blood come out of his side. He had the power to stay there in spite of his father turning his back on him because he could not look at sin. He had the power to go down and dust the grave. And he had the power to go down in the lower parts of the earth. The Bible says, he that ascended is first he that descended. He went down in the hell and carried on a three-day revival. And then early Sunday morning, he had the power to rise up out of the grave. Now when he got up out of the grave, he neatly folded the grave clothes and the grave now he laid them aside, put one foot on the grave and the other foot on resurrection ground and declared all power is in my hand. I can do what I want to do. Sisters, what does that mean to you in light of the pandemic, uh, corona pandemic? What does that mean to you? I'm glad you asked. It means that if you're sick and you can't get out of bed, he has the power to raise you up again. If you're hungry, he has the power to give you food to eat. He has the power to put shelter over your head. If you're friendless, he can be a friend for the friendless. If you just want to see Jesus, he can lift you up and place you on a new level. I'm glad that I know he has the power. Do you know he has the power? Trust in him with all of my heart and lean not to my own understanding. I don't understand why he 
can move the way he move. I don't understand why he carried me through some trials. I don't understand because he said my way not your way. My thoughts are not your thoughts. As high as the heaven is above the earth. So high am my way. I'm glad I can just trust in the Lord. I can't have to figure it out. I don't have to know everything. I know he's a water walker. I know he's a wine maker. Can you trust him today? If you can trust him. I will trust him.
whatever you have right now at your disposal. If you ain't got nothing but a glass of water, Jesus said, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. And if you do it in remembrance of him, I'm sure that God will take note and be a blessing to you as we now take up the blood and take up the weight. It is a symbol of that great sacrifice that he made. And the blood will never lose its power. Oh no. Because it flows from the highest mountain to the lowest valley. God bless you. I know it was the blood.